Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rajas Kaka Sungura YouTube channel. A big thank you for your continued support. I have a few papers here which I will be referring to because uh, it is a research I have done for you so that you are able to understand today's political events. First, I want to say we delivered beds and mattresses and even blankets to the family, the man we had built a house in Kamokama, whose wife vanished because of poverty, leaving behind two little children who are now about seven years. And a big thank you to you for your support. Those who supported us with beds, mattresses, and blankets, may God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Back to politics. Today, Raila Odinga had a political meeting, not even a political meeting, but rather a consultative forum that was attended by thousands of Kenyans who are tired with this defiant, rogue Kenya Kwanzaa government. The high cost of living and other things have pushed Kenyans to the wall, and Raila Odinga remains the only hope for Kenyans. Now, Raila Odinga jetted back to the country and as usual today he had a mega consultative rally in Nairobi, a high voltage consultative forum in Nairobi. And um, you know some people think Raila <laughs> is a political dwarf. But I want to remind you, Raila is a political scientist. Is our Baba and respect him so much. Now, Baba said, and in his speech, I had him insinuate something called Shaba Shaba, a return of Shaba Shaba. And I know many political adolescents do not understand what Shaba Shaba means. <laughs> So today I'm here to break down for you. And um, I will be trying to show you how the Shaba Shaba of 1990 is the same as the Shaba Shaba of 2023. I am going also to show you why the wrong dictatorial government, that is the Moi government, that is the Kanu government, the 1990 Kanu government. Hmm. I'm going to show you why the 1990 Kanu government is the same as the 2023 Kenya Kwanza government. Now, in Kenya, the Sabasaba movement was formed in 1990. And uh, it brought together political bigwigs and uh, powerful activists who came together and said, enough is enough in this kind of government. And this is a time that a revolution was born. The Sabasaba was meant to fight one-party dictatorship. And this brought are some fruits which we are enjoying today, multi-party democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, politicians, the young and the old, joined the movement. And this showed us how Kenyans were tired of the Kanu government, how Kenyans were tired of Moi, how Kenyans were tired of one-party dictatorship. They said enough is enough. And they joined hands to send one party dictatorship home. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, according to what I read in history, Moi had plans to build a 60 story building in Nairobi, and um, this was supposed to be the Kanu Kenya headquarters. And uh, 
This story building was to be built in Uhuru Park. 60 story building. And when they began these plans, the Kanu government had no cash to run the project. But then, the people who had formed the Saba Saba movement, they were against the project. The civil society, led by Wangari Madai, they rejected the move. But we all know in government, they are defiant. Like now, in the Kenya Kwanzaa government, we have defiance. The 2023 finance bill was against the wish of the people. But then, defiant politicians within the Kenya Kwanzaa government pushed it and it has been signed into law. Now, in 1990, just like 2023, Moi was pushing for the 60-story building that was meant to be the Kanu Kenya headquarters. They said, Liwa liwalo, lazima tutajenga. Mukatae musikatae, lazima tutajenga. Like in 2023, walisema mukatae musikatae, finance bill ya 2023, lazima itapita ndogo zanguni. Raila Odinga opposed it. 1990, Mother Karua opposed the idea. But then, we all know Peter Olo Aringo, who was a powerful bigwig in the Kanu government, led other powerful politicians in breaking ground for the massive project. Unless the gentlemen, this is when things began to go south. Moi refused to listen to the opposition. Moi refused to listen to the civil society. Moi refused to listen to activists the same way. In 2023, William Ruto has refused to listen to the opposition. William Ruto has refused to listen to the civil society. William Ruto has refused to listen to activists. And he has said, Liweli Walo, Finance Bill, Nelazima. Now, ladies and gentlemen, history tells me that at this point, Moi had no finance to run the project. Just like William Ruto has no finance to fund his 2023-2024 budget. <laughs> I told you, I'm going to explain to you why the Saba Saba of 1990 is the same as the Saba Saba of 2023 and what is likely to happen in 2023. <clears throat> Sorry. Because Moi didn't have the cash to start the project. History tells me that he conveyed a meeting of powerful government officials and he led a team of experts to America and Norway to go and source for 20 billion, that is 200 million US dollars, to come and fund the project. But because Moi had ignored the activists, had ignored the opposition. They went to source for the cash. And uh, history tells me they were chased away. Yes, they were chased away. They were told, go back to your country and make things right. At this point, I think this is the time when uh, someone lost his life. Mysteriously, and I'm going to tell you who. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know how the death of Ouko happened. Now, wakati moja alifukuzwa kambiwa, kwa sababu umedharau civil society, kwa sababu umedharau opposition, atukupati pesa go back. Meaning, the project collapsed because it lacked the funding. Just like, William Ruto's 2023-2024 budget is going to collapse. Listen to me very clearly. I am not a prophet, but keep these words for future reference. Just like the Kenya Kwanzaa budget is going to collapse in broad daylight. Hawana pesa, they don't have cash. 
They must go and beg. They must impose high taxes to fund the budget. Now, at this time, things had started going south for the Kano government. Najua, siku yako ikifika, hakuna mtu atazuia. Siku yako ya kufa ikifika. No one. No one at all. No one. At this time, according to history, the Moi government had begun to experience a series of challenges just like the Kenya Kwanzaa government is experiencing. One, a collapsing economy. Just like Kenya Kwanzaa is staring at a collapsing economy. And at this time, corruption had hit Moi government to the core. Just like Corruption is hitting the Kenya Kwanza government to the core. Mumuona pesa nyingi zinapotea hapa Kemsa skando. Sijui ni wapi hustler fund skando. Nani? Vitu mingi. Corruption. Mumesikia tena ingine kwa minister of hii ya huyu mdomo chaf. Huyu mpiaro. Anuto Moses Kuria. Corruption and hit the Moi government proper. Just like corruption is hitting the William Ruta government properly. And we all know, Moi had imposed erratic projects. Just like Kenya Kwanza is forcing erratic projects like the housing project down to the Kenyan's throat. Hmm? It's the same. Ruto is using the same, same script. And at this time, we all know, Kenya faced food challenges. Wa Kenya walikuwa nanja kubwa. Just like now, when Kenyans are hungry, they cannot afford food. Prices are high. Kenyans are hungry. They are crying. And um, you remember, this time there were ethnic tensions. Kulikuwa na wakale njini wate kwa serikali. Just like today, when there is an ethnic tension in the Kenya Kwanza government. In every ministry, in every parastato, unasikia yemu ne tukulu tukulu, iyo tupe, that is the language. Ethnic tension grippled the Kano government. Just like it is happening in the Kenya Kwanza government. Police began to beat people who were protesting. Tear gas, live bullets, just like William Ruto is doing, unleashing terror to opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, and we all know this is the time, a few days uh, later, this is when Oko died. Now, combining all this, as history tells me, when tension was high, the fearing President Moi appointed a technical team led by George Saitoti, who was by then the vice president. There was only one mission. Go and ask the people what they want. Go ask them. So George Saitoti led a team, a special team, to go and collect views from Kenyans. Unless a gentleman, history tells me that this never worked because Kenyans were extremely tired of this government. At this point, Kenneth Matiba and Charles Rubia, the political bigwigs from central Kenya, they were super rich and they were commanding great respect from the central region. These two guys, according to history, they had massive following from their area. Now, walikuwa na pesa. And Moi feared them. And you know what happened to Kenneth Matiba later, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's really a sad thing. But news broke that the two Mughals, the two tycoons, the two political bigwigs, 
were in talks with Oginga Odinga, a father to Raila Molo Odinga. And you know, Raila Odinga had a team. One of them was Masinde Muliro. And another one was Martin Shikuku. Our watu walikuwa ni watu wanguvu. The three of them. Oginga Odinga, um, Martin Shikuku, and Masinde Muliro. Now, our watu from the central Kenya, that is Charles Rubia and Kenneth Matiba, ikaseme kanda kwamba, they are in talks with the three gentlemen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, between May and June 1990, moto kawaka wa siyasa. Just like we are staring at the political fire in 2023. Moto wa siyasa mkumo kawaka nchini Kenya. And um, at this point, Rubia and Matiba, they announced a political rally. And uh, what shocked Moi, this meeting was said to be a mega rally that will spearhead a revolution against one party rule. And these guys were determined to bring multi party democracy in this country. Now, at this point, they said we are going to have a huge meeting in Kamkunji grounds. Moi feared. Moi feared. And at this point, history tells me Matiba and Rubia were arrested. Now, after the arrest, happened your maneno yalianza kumoramba Moi. Sitaki kuongea mengine. But this team and other people, they gave birth to the multi-party democracy we are enjoying today. Finally, baada ya joto kali, Moi gave in and said, Ato mimi, nimegubali. So, he agreed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Saba Saba has a history. And when Rayla talks of Saba Saba, he has history. William Ruto should be careful. Because in 1990, William Ruto was a kid. Alikuwa mtoto ya campus. Around in 1991 is when he's joining Moi in State House. So bado alikuwa mtoto. But at this age, Rayla was a grown-up. Ladies and gentlemen, To my own view, it's better root to be warned. One, Kenyans are tired. Kenyans are hungry. The hustlers are hungry. There's no money circulation. High taxes are going to hit this country. Corruption is hitting Kenya Kwanza government. It's time to eat. Now listen, a revolution is loading. It needs wise men. A revolution is is loading. Keep my words. A revolution is loading. And Saba Saba will not go down in vain. Don't joke with the mother Karua. Aye. Don't joke with Raila Odinga. Mother Karua. Mother Kome. Uyu zaza mekulo na serakari. Na wengine. I want your watu. The powerful lawyers of those times. Who powerfully women lawyers kwalikuwa na chama chao. Mother Karua and the rest. Awa ndio watu walihusika in fighting the rotten Kanu government. Now, wait. Ladies and gentlemen. Na nataka ni muambia ruto. Kita kuramba. God bless you ladies and gentlemen. See you in the next video. Asante ni sana.